Congratulations, red team. Black team, please step to the side. Thank you. Nini, you're crying. I'm assuming it's tears of joy. <laughs> yeah. Nini, what I loved in your spoon bread was bringing your own background to bear on a dish that you were inspired by. It tells my story, where I'm from, and I'm glad you guys liked it. The flavors, the layers, it was haunting. Tom, who had the winning dish? It's Nini. Your dessert was complex in flavor, but simple in execution. Every piece of it just worked really nicely. Thank you so much. The winner of this contest is... Nini. Oh. <laughs> Nini, that's two in a row. Thank you so much. It was an honor to cook for all of you. It's Restaurant Wars. Oh, oh, oh. This year, instead of two restaurants, there will be three. Holy sh! What is another word for terrified? I'll be front of house with all of the challenges. I've always been very calm. Nini's not talking about which tables need to be turned. Nini's not telling us how long the wait is at the door. Like it's it's a full blown catastrophe. Nini, can you please come back here? I'm just curious, what's going on with the people who are waiting for a table? We have to try to squeeze them in. OK, go Thank ahead and you. do your thing. Good luck. Nini, please pack your knives and go. Nini, it was great watching you cook, but it was our opinion that the lack of training in the front of the house had a snowball effect. It really just led to a lot of problems. Thank you for the opportunity. My hat's off to Kristen on a perfect onion ring. They were crispy, they were hot, they were delicious. Do you think they were seasoned from? Or did they have enough uh, salt They were for me, or? especially a little bit of lemon. And your onions were crispy and light. Deep fried, can't go wrong. I've seen it go wrong. <laughs> Here on the show. Thankfully it didn't today though. And the winner is? Kristen. Awesome. awesome. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my God. So what I made today was a almond and chocolate sponge cake with a ceviche made with the eggs. I made a bowl, made my cake pan out of the Reynolds wrap, and then some melted chocolate and some buttered apples. The texture of the cake is great. It's really nice and mm -hmm. light and moist. And thank you. The chef that used the foil the most creatively and also made a dish that had great flavors. And I never would have guessed that this dish was made in 30 minutes or less. So today's quick fire winner is Kristen. Thank you. Kristen. I did a toasted sage matcha and goat milk custard with a cornmeal and goat yogurt sauté, And then I have the tay berries that were macerated in extra virgin olive oil. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to have to go back and get some more. <laughs> I love the custard. I think it's just the right texture. It's not sweet. I like it. I think Kristen's berries macerated in the olive oil was just that component alone was one of my favorite things yeah. today. And the winner today is Kristen. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Back to back. Thank you. Kristen, I loved your dish. Thank you. That's kind of how I like to cook. I indulge in a little gluttonous. There's nothing wrong with cheese and butter and salt and a good old runny egg. I absolutely loved the camembert sauce. When do you have a cracker if not with the camembert cheese? I really like that a lot. The two winners for us today. Kristen and Sheldon. <laughs> Josh, Brooke, and Kristen, the three of you served our favorite dishes of the day. Thank you. Thank you. What I really enjoyed about it, you hit on that homey. It had homey flavors without homey presentation. It reminded me of a chicken pot pie from my grandmother. Thank you. The winner will be Kristen. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yum. Where's the gelatin? Holy I thought that was done. We have 30 minutes. The original plan is to thicken the bouillabaisse base broth with gelatin, so when you charge it in the ISI, it comes out nice and frothy. You know what? Skip gelatin, add some cream. Cream and soy milk. I can't put in the gelatin because the stock is still on the stove. It still has the bones. It's not done. I had a vision going in. 
and now it's just all up. Josie, I think that bouillabaisse had an enormous amount of flavor. My problem was I barely got any of it. You know, Kristen helped me plate up your plate, so, um, you know, <laughs> I did. I would have served it with more broth, but it's not my concept, and it was not my menu, and, uh... Josie, you thought there should be more sauce on the plate. Did any time you tell Kristen, I think there needs to be more sauce on this plate? No. Why? Well, because she showed me how she wanted it plated. There's um, a lot of things that would have been done differently. Absolutely. And Kristen, originally when you envisioned the dish, assuming that when you were putting gelatin in it... No gelatin. Why that not? Was, I would have made it a brothy... <laughs> I mean, I would have kind of, you know, stuck to the original idea behind the bouillabaisse. Josie. You're safe. Kristen. Please pack your knives and go. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. I understand that people want to save their own asses. I get it. I do too, but at least I know I'm going home with my integrity intact and without backstabbing anybody else. I didn't go to a lot of potlucks as a kid, but I love artichokes, frying artichokes, cleaning artichokes, cooking artichokes. It's simple, but these artichokes are good. I would hope to be in a potluck. What did you guys think of the artichokes? I like the artichokes. I, they were delicious. I don't normally like artichokes. We really liked the artichoke dish. Thank you. I thought it was really beautifully executed. The aioli was delicious, and I loved the addition of the fried capers. We all decided that the best tasting dish that was cooked perfectly and was refined was Stephanie's dish. <laughs> Congratulations, Stephanie. <laughs> Chefs, for you, we have fried Louisiana oysters, and then we're going to do a salad of some raw Louisiana tuna, beach mushrooms, and fresnos that have been pickled. There you go, Chefs. Looks good. Thank you. My first reaction when I saw fried oysters, I thought, really? Uh. But then you pulled it off. Your salad element on the plate, Stephanie, was really great. It made the whole dish very light. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. There can only be one winner. And Stephanie, congratulations. I'm a puke. <laughs> the corn silk, I'm afraid it's Let like... it go. Please. It's my ass. I'll be nervous. I'm not sold on the corn silk nest. Seems pretty loopy to me. Everything's fine, everything's perfect, everything looks good and tastes good. Grab the nests and I'll show you where to put them on the plate. Nick is not willing to remove the nest and it's hard because he has immunity, but I can't tell him to remove it because it's his dish. Present it the way it's looking at you, thank you. Unfortunately, your team was our least favorite tonight. And Nicholas, since you have immunity, Shirley or Stephanie, one of you will be going home. Nicholas, let's talk about your chicken and chocolate. How did you feel about the dish when you were finished? It? it was outside of my comfort zone. It was outside of your comfort zone. Did you like the dish? I liked the sauce. It was bitter. It was had a little bit of heat to it. Um, it had a lot of Madeira, but I didn't, we didn't, I didn't get, get any, any of that. Of that. Like, we got straight chocolate. Okay. I mean, would you go and serve that if you had a restaurant? To, would you sit down, give it to your mother, and say, "This is really good"? No, oh, sure. It was probably our least favorite dish tonight. Clearly, you're not feeling good about this. Obviously not, Chef. Yeah. Cooking is a team effort. And do you think that your team should be penalized for you? Or do you think you should resign? I thought I did well enough yesterday to earn immunity today, Chef. Yeah. Part of the game. Stephanie. Please pack your knives and go. He won immunity fair and square. He deserved it. It's part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. It came down to yeah. We knew. I went home making a dish that I'm very proud of. At least I know that I was a really serious contender, and I always was good enough. So guys, this is a roasted pork, mushroom, and blackcurrant terrine. It's inspired by 
bit of a pate on croute that we had yesterday at Republique, but I decided to deep fry mine instead because I think that makes it much more delicious. Anthony's a big fan of head cheese. Yeah. yeah, and then this is actually my granny's recipe for apple butter. But you should bottle this apple butter. <laughs> The chef who made a really beautiful dish and a dish that I know Jonathan would have really loved is... Kevin. What did you make for us? I'm calling it bachelor fried rice. This is wiener, Cheeto, and bourbon fried rice. Have you ever made this before? No. Asian food not normally in my arsenal. Kevin, I was really impressed by your use of the hot Cheetos and the hot dogs. It was like a party in my mouth. One chef really stood out, and that was... Kevin! Yay! Congratulations. You're two for two. Yeah. Kevin? That pork was outstanding. Your wife picked up the back notes of the rosemary and the pork that was cooked with the beans. Plus, the look of it was perfect. Thank you. I should be super happy to hear you say that. <laughs> so, Nancy, who had our favorite dish today? The best dish today was Kevin. Congratulations. We are sweet and salty, and we did a fish sauce caramel roasted cabbage braised with ham, a little bit of apple, and a cured pork crumble. It's really cool that you guys just focused on a vegetable. Thank you both. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks, guys. What I love about Melissa and Kevin's dish, when you put it in your mouth, there's this bang of flavor, both sweet and salty. I mean, this is something that stands out on any menu. You're like, I want this. A dish that stayed true to the challenge in the flavor profiles is Melissa and Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Tell me about your relationship to this dish. This is a dish that explains a lot about Southern culture that is often overlooked. The chicken, both breast and thigh, were beautifully cooked. And of course, the sauces that were with them. It was really blown away just by your presence as a restaurateur. You can tell that you think about every single detail in your restaurants. That, that means the world to me. Thank you. Country captain from Kevin. Congratulations. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Gregory and Kevin, since your restaurants won the pitch challenge, your restaurant concepts are about to come to life. 12 is the one that's missing their entrees. Does that mean that 11 got their entrees? I can't play Sherlock Holmes right now and get to the bottom of this. I just have to remake the food. But every time we remake one table's food, it means we're taking away time from another table. Am I missing anything else? Good, I'm just checking to make sure we're not. Okay. No one dish is super technically difficult to execute, but the timing of bringing together 12 dishes simultaneously, that's the most challenging part. Keep talking, buddy. We got it, all right? Kevin, was there any dish that you wished you had edited out? There probably could or should have been some editing, but the monologue inside my head the entire time was my grandmother saying, you give them everything you possibly can, and then you give them a few more because that's what you're supposed to do with your guests. I don't know if the amount of dishes was a problem. Canapes took up a course and it was, they shouldn't have, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I agree completely. I was concerned of the amount that was on there, but he did emphasize that this is how it is and it's country captain and you have a lot of sides and that's just how it's gonna go. Kevin, please pack your knives and go. Thank you, guys. You're a good man, Kevin Gillespie. I did a roasted corn salad. I brushed it with a little bit of chili oil. I really think Arnold salad cools it off nicely. I'm very happy with it. You had our favorite lunch today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. What did you make specifically, Arnold? Um, I did the roasted corn tomato salad. It looked great and it tasted great. I appreciate that. Thank you. What did you make for us? A sesame lamb meatball and a roasted garlic and rosemary gazpacho. I like it. Oh. Yeah, it seasons really well. well. This is talented to take this kebab and grill it. Arnold, you did it for me. Thanks for letting me do it. <laughs>
Wow. Which pot is ours, Arnold, for the all pasta? All of the ends, all of the ends. Do you hate me? No, but I'm not putting it in yet because I'm That's not fine. gonna overcook it. Lynn's biggest concern was overcooking the pasta. We're not gonna do it until last minute, right? Where are we now? I've made pasta tons of times before. Fresh pasta cooks in like a minute. I'm thinking, oh God, get over it. I know what I can and can't do. I think it's plenty, Lynn. Please, let's move on. Can we please just move on? Please, All right, please. if it's overcooked, it's on you. OK, that's fine, but I just want to move on. Yeah, it's on. not fine, because I'll be thrown off, too. OK. I tell her, you know, it's not just about the pasta. For the last minute of the dish, everything else has to go on there, too. And so I'm trying to put on show by kind of not being too stressed out or put on a facade of it. This is a pineapple red curry mussel with squid ink pasta. It's finished with coconut milk and a focaccia dusted with coriander and cumin. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The pasta is not cooked. The pasta, yeah, it's not cooked enough, but the sauce is good. Were you guys happy with the outcome? I was happy with the flavor of the dish. I think the pasta was um, probably undercooked. I beg to differ. I think it was cooked beautifully. You thought it was cooked. You seem to be disagreeing. I'm surprised that this is coming to surface. Lynn and Arnold, please pack your knives and go. It's been a very positive and inspirational experience for me. And I'm honored and humbled to have met you and have worked with everybody. I stayed true to what I do, and I think I really put a little bright flavor into the competition.